Man, oh man, are you guys seeing what I am seeing? Tabbed File Explorer. It has finally come to Microsoft Windows. Look at that, guys. There's tabs in the File Explorer. Never thought that I would see this on Microsoft Windows, or at least I never thought that I would see it by default in Microsoft Windows because there's no mods that are going on here. This is all code that's coming from Microsoft because, uh, you know, for a long time there used to be add-on programs and I guess there still are add-on programs. Like I guess some people still use them um, on Windows to get this functionality. Like I used to use QT Tab Bar years and years ago on, um, I think, Windows Vista, but definitely Windows 7. I can't really remember whether I used it uh, on Vista or not because I upgraded to 7 pretty quickly uh, after I had Vista. But yeah, that was a super handy thing. It made my workflow so much smoother, which was basically installing mods for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and uh, I don't know, I guess doing essays for school and stuff like that. It made all of that stuff a whole lot easier. But like I said, it used to be that you had to get that by modding your file explorer with additional software that you would download and install from the internet. And that's something that we don't want a lot of Windows users doing because next thing you know, they go to the wrong website and they're getting messages on their computer telling them to call a Microsoft support representative. And then that guy converts their entire 401k to Google Play cards. But anyway, the tabs. The tabs are now here. You don't have to worry about the Google Play cards anymore because Microsoft took care of it for you. And I think the tabs actually have been in Windows 11 for a little while as some kind of a setting, you know, some setting that's buried deep within the labyrinth of settings. There's settings within settings. Uh, but now it's on by default. If you're using, um, I think the update was KB5019509. So this is a Windows update that might actually be worth installing. I mean, it was worth me taking some time to boot into my Windows 11 virtual machine to install it. And yes, this is a virtual machine. I guess I should point that out to, uh, you know, the people that get really bent out of shape over whatever operating system I'm using in my videos. Like uh, I was using the Ubuntu VM for one a little while ago and some people can believe it. They're like, oh my God, are you trying to create the ultimate soy boy normie Linux distribution? What's going on here? You've got Ubuntu with Chrome. I mean, look, okay, this is just my web dev VM for building and testing web apps, okay? Because a lot of managed hosts, they end up deploying things on Ubuntu servers by default. And as I've discussed, a million times in my videos, the majority of people out there are using Chrome. So if you're testing a web app, it's it's worth, you know, taking a quick spin in Chrome, no matter how painful it might be to open Google Chrome on any operating system. Uh, but also over here, I've got something a little bit cooler. I've got a heckin' Kali Linux VM for breaking web apps and other hacker man activities. So don't be alarmed if you see me filming something in a different operating system for a little bit of a change of scenery, okay? It's most likely a virtual machine. Trust me, if I end up distro hopping my host, or better yet, if I end up switching my host to something like a BSD, it's gonna be a major announcement. You will be sure to hear about it, and you're probably gonna also see a whole bunch of videos about my new comfy distribution. Uh, but anyway, let's head back to the opposite of a comfy distribution. Okay, you know what? Look, look, I'll be fair to the Windows users. They're going to be a whole lot comfier now that they have tabs in their file explorer because they finally get to experience what pretty much every file explorer on Linux has had for a decade or more. I mean, I honestly can't even think of any file explorers in the Linux ecosystem that don't have tabs. Uh, so yeah, I mean, look, imagine the possibilities, right? Imagine the increased productivity. Maybe you have Microsoft Edge open and, uh, you know, you've got this thing where you can split um, the different programs that you have open. Okay, so you're going to have them open like this and you want to install a mod for your video game, right? Because that's what we do on Windows. So we're going to open up File Explorer. We're going to go and Bing it 
okay? Because we're on Windows. We're not gonna Google it, we're gonna Bing it. Uh, we're gonna look up the mod for our heckin' video game. We're gonna go to a website like this to download it. And we've gotta dodge these downloads that are trying to get us to download the Wave browser. What is this? It's probably some kind of virus that's gonna steal my credit card and my social security. What's this? Oh my God, it's not the big red or the big green one. That's how you know it's fake. This one, the tiny red download button. That's the real one and then we download it from here. Bam. All right, and then you need to install it, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we have to go over to our downloads in our file explorer, and then they tell you you gotta copy it into whatever, some type of uh, folder <laughs> in program folders, right? Instead of opening another file explorer and covering up this here, or you know, maybe you're gonna try to do like the split view like this, and then you can't read the instructions on the website, now you can just open another tab. Oh, it's beautiful. Just go to here, right? And then C drive, program files, and um, I don't know, let's let's drop it in Windows Media Player, sure. Bam, we'll, inst <laughs> we'll install our mod for, uh, I don't know, just pretend that it's like a Fortnite mod for Call of Duty 69 on my comfy Windows gaming rig. All right, bam, increased productivity. Now, I do have to spoil the uh, Winglows tab victory just a little bit because, man, this file manager still kind of sucks compared to Thunar or Dolphin or pretty much any other uh, Windows file manager or Linux file manager because you can't take the tabs and drag them off and create little independent windows like this, okay? And you can't, um, actually, I don't even know how you would create an independent window. Let's see, Control T doesn't do it. Um, hmm. Control Shift T doesn't do it. And uh, let's see, can I right click up here to create a new one? Okay, well, I know that, uh, I know this works. <laughs> I know that works, so now I can try to prove uh, my point. You can't transfer the tabs between one another, all right? So look, this should be, this This is something that you would want to do, okay? You would think that somebody over there at Microsoft, that, that multi-billion dollar corporation, <laughs> would think that, hey, maybe somebody wants to transfer this over here, and look, it's not a space issue, all right? If I, if I close this down, right? It's not like I'm running out of space to, to slide it over. It's just not a feature that they thought to include. I mean, what's going on here? If, if I go over to my heckin' Hackerman OS, I mean, I mean, come on, the Hackerman OS supports it. You know, I can, I can open up these tabs and I can just pass them back and forth all comfy-like. I've got the split uh, window. This is also something that's been in Linux a lot longer than Windows. Look at that. I can pass them back and forth, I can shuffle them. Let's make this one the desktop so we know, so we can keep track of it. Bam, over here, over here, over here. Hot potato, hot potato. I mean, come on, and this is open source, right? Microsoft is, is safeguarding their code because they think it's special, but we have an open source file manager, Thunar, that has all of this functionality and then this closed source proprietary nonsense doesn't even have a basic feature like being able to transfer tabs from uh, between one window and another. So much bloat, yet so few features. Now there's another feature that Microsoft slipped into this Windows update that's enabled by default and might actually be a little bit spooky and that is suggested actions. Uh, so this is a program that basically sits in the background analyzing text, analyzing text content that you select, like when you go to highlight some text to you know, copy and paste it. And if it looks like a date or a phone number, then that program is going to be able to make suggestions like creating an event uh, on the date that you selected and highlighted on your calendar. And it'll do that for any text. It doesn't matter if it's in the browser, if it's in a document or what, uh, like this text in Notepad, for example. If I highlight this part, and I right click and copy it, this comes up, create an event. And then, oh, look at that, I can create it uh, in my calendar. Although for some reason it messes up the time. I don't know, maybe I need to select all the way to 12 p.m. 
and it'll select the right time. Uh, no, it still looks like it's messing it up. Um, but anyway, as far as the spookiness goes, I mean, this is something I don't know for sure. It's kind of hard to test because uh, it's proprietary, but it's a program sitting in the background, scanning text that's on the screen, and then who knows where that data is being sent. I mean, it does work uh, with the network disconnected, so hopefully this isn't being sent to any of Microsoft servers, but you know, they're uh, one of those companies that are in the business of data collection and they're not showing you the sauce. They're not showing you the source. And a couple of other probably not so spooky features that were added with this update are taskbar overflow, which basically means if you decide to pin an absolutely mental amount of programs down here in your taskbar, well, you just get this little three dot menu right here that you can click on to access the rest of them. And also you're supposed to be able to right click down here on the taskbar and get a task manager pop up. But for some reason, doesn't do that on my system. It just gives me this taskbar setting. Uh, but I don't really care about this because I access the task manager the superior way with control shift escape. So yeah, that's fine for me. So I guess, thank you, Microsoft. Very cool uh, with the new features, but if we could get a GPL edition of Windows, then that would be wicked awesome.